وكل ما لا تراه العين ملكوت از ايفريثينج بيوند وات يو كان سي هل ات نوت بين فور الشياطين فور ديفلز رومينج اراوند ذا هارتس اوف بني ادم ويل بي لايك انجلز كايند اوف ثينج اند ذاتس ذا فيري ثوت ذات ابو بكر رضي الله عنه اند حمدالله ذي ثوت وي ار ويز ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم وي فيل لايك سيرتن واي وي ار ايلسوير Because when we are with the Prophet, no shayati, they are angels flying. He managed very high. So he said, those are barriers in your way of understanding the Quran. Kullu ma dhaga an al-kawas wa la yudhar illa bin nur al-basira fa huwa min al-malaku. Everything that you realize and you can get to, not with your eyes, with your insight, this is malaku. And he talked about four things to prevent us from understanding the Quran. One, he said, number one is if somebody's focus is only on the the recitation, the letters. So this is someone who is learning Quran. Don't get me wrong, they read and know how to pronounce the letters and everything is important. But if this is the only thing that you do and you 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 all attention is to focus on this and it doesn't go beyond this. This is one way of the barriers of shaitan. That's not to suggest that we should not learn how to recite Quran the right way. No, we should recite Quran, learn the dream, learn Ahkam. But this is to get us beyond. This is level one, we should not stand, uh, stay here. So don't focus only on the recitation. Don't go to the other extreme and say, it's okay, it doesn't make a difference if I recite it this way or that way. It does make a difference. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a certain way, Jibreel taught him a certain way, but that is not the ultimate goal of it. If you make it the ultimate goal, then this is one way preventing you from understanding it. Number two, and this is very delicate. When we, especially those who are born Muslims, we take things and cross it in your mind. Let us say that yet and Abu. You have it in your mind, I'm not here to give it a seal for you. In your heart, in your mind, Na'bu, it has certain meaning in your heart and mind. You grow up in a masjid in Pakistan, the shaykh said this, or that's how you see it. Ibadah, Yaqeen, right? It could be like Ibadah, oh yeah, Ibadah, so that standing house, yeah. But could it have any other? If you are fixated on certain things and you don't question, not question, and you don't look beyond, you're not going to understand much because like all of us read Surah Al-Fatiha and all of us think that we know it all. But guess what? Surah Al-Fatiha is the best of the Quran and if we just know the tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha, we got a lot. However, at the same time, we all think that we know it all. Iyaka Iyaka So he said one, that's the, the number two barrier of us not fully understanding the Quran is thinking that what we know is everything. Yaqa na'ru na'ru, as I recited, is this. Yaqeen is this. Unidina is this. Don't take it for granted. Go and read. Because the Ibadah is going to be much more than what we just know. Much way bigger than Salat and Siyah. And whatever the meaning of what you have in your heart and mind, don't make what you know as a barrier for you to not uh, get to know more about the Quran. Number three of the barriers of the Quran. Uh, understanding the Quran and it will not be able to 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 be is if you are if you have a sin you are insisting you are fixated on this sin or you have kibir some kind of arrogance in your heart or you have hawa muttaa you have hawa everyone else has hawa and shahwa but you make it like you follow it all the time Allah said about some people who always follow their desire, they made their desire, they left, they got to worship. Maybe somebody is a little one or two, you follow that desire all the time. That will prevent you from fully understanding the Quran. And he said, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ سَبَبُ ظُلْمَةِ الْقَلْمِ وَصَدَقِهِ This, the sins and being fixated on the sin and following the desire and having arrogance in the heart, is like the dirt on the mirror. It causes the heart to heart. He is talking in the first two lines about the heart being like the mirror. And this is taken by most of the khutabat right now. The first one we talked about this is Imam He said, heart is like the mirror. 
allowing all the kibra and all the sins and all the hawa and all the desires to come on your mirror, on your car, it's going to be exactly like a mirror that you have at home and it has a lot of stains and you haven't cleaned it in months or years. Look at the mirror. Who do you see there? Is it me? Is it what you see? The mirror will not reflect much. You need to clean it. Same way you need to clean your heart and cleanse your heart to remove these barriers so the meanings of the Quran will reflect on your heart. Like the, the pictures or the images reflect clearly in the clean mirror if your heart is clean. Because heart is the place where Quran, uh, Allah just sent the Quran to reveal to the heart, upon the heart of the Prophet. And Quran is addressing our heart. So if the heart is like a dirty mirror, uh, you will not see much. Cleanse and clean your heart. Practice how do I get a, a better mirror? How do I get a better heart? The inamati as shahawati is to take it one by one, remove those, following those desires. You will have, you will continue to have desire, desires, but take them one by one, then you do not follow them. And he quoted a hadith, even though it's mu'bal. Mu'bal is a hadith where the tabi, tabi, the follower of the tabi, does not mention the tabi or the sahabi in there. Which is one of the weak uh, ahadi. Uh, uh, but the meaning of it is correct. If my ummah will hold dear and high and great money, dollar and riyal, put your own currency, the haybah or the dignity of Islam will be taken from the heart. And this is the point. If they abandon Amr al Ma'ruf, enjoying the good, this is good, do that. Or this is bad, don't do that. And Nahyar al he said, Huri Mubarak al Wahid. They will be deprived of the blessing of the Wahid, and the understanding of the scholar is they will not get the right understanding of the Quran because they are turning away from it. And this is confirmed by many other authentic ahadith the Sahih. They will be deprived of understanding the Quran if they do not, uh, if they abandon Abu Ma'ruf and Nahya and Munkar and so on. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah Azza wa Jalla has stipulated and put a condition for understanding the Quran, true understanding of the Quran, to be an inadvertent effect, to, to be abdan munidan. Allah Azza wa said, Tafsirat and Wadikra, this will be a tafsirat, an eye opener. To make you see that with the inside and will be a reminder for who? For and will be like this for who? For those who memorize it, only for those who are perfect in the situation, only for those who are no. Abdi Muni. You have to be Abd, humble, servant of Allah, Muni. And that's something you need to read about it. You need to go ask and open the books. How can I be Abd and Muni humbling myself to Allah? So Quran will be top self and what you come. Because that's what Allah said, this is what it will be for Abdi Muni. Again, it's Allah is saying, only those who may tadakkaw illa man, you need. Those who make inad, those who humble themselves, those who come back, those who return to Allah, only those will have the reminder of the Quran and tadakkaw. Inna ma yatadakkaw kul al-bad. Only the people of al-bad look, al-bad jami'luk, which is the mind. The people of minds, only those who get the yatadakkaw. Um, I will give one more quickly. That, so those were the three, the four things to prevent the person from understanding the Quran. Then the next technique, and I will conclude with this, and Yakuna, and this is actually this is the fourth one. This is the fourth of the barriers. And this is maybe it's going to be a little bit shocking for some of us, but many scholars talk about this, including uh, today's scholars. The kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, we should not invent in the kalam of Allah. We should read the, what the scholars said, what the Mufassirun said. But the Imam is saying here, what Abdullah ibn Abbas, from the Sahaba, what the scholar said, this is not the only meaning that Allah Azza wa Jalla Don't be fixated only on that. What do you mean, Shaykh? That we have to get, everybody has their own tafsir? No. He said that this book is for people, for you. 
apply it in your life, and actually this is the next technique, which is tahsis. How does this apply to me? This is not a call for invention, but it's a call to open your eye. Yes, read what Ibn Kathir said, what the Sahaba said, what this ayah could mean. It could be all of them, and it could be something extra that applies to your life. So do not limit the Quran. And again, there is a fine line between taking the Quran out of context, like some of those liberal guys abuse it and use it to against what other ayat are saying. No. This is calling a call to revive the Quran in your heart. This is the Quran is linnas, la'allahum yatadakkaroon. It's not only for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or uh, uh, himself and sahaba, it's for every single person. And zalna alaykum al-kitab. We have sent this down for you. لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ We have sent this book for you. So use it for your own personal understanding. Not calling to invent, but calling to dive deep into the meaning of the Qur'an. How does it address my situation right now, me and my wife? Go, dive into the Qur'an and find it. How do I deal with my kids? How do I go about my business? Go and read for yourself. Read and learn. Use what the Sahaba of the Sahaba said as a guideline, but don't deal with it like the Quran. That's the only way. Because it had it not had it been just one way of understanding, why do we have a Qadr who say something, and the Qadir might say something, and Qadr would say something else, and so on. So basically, do not let the Quran of uh, previous scholars uh, uh, prevent you from understanding the Quran, applying the Quran into your own life because you might see some ayah jumping clearly into your own life right now that you see yourself. And that's the meaning of the next one which is the tafsis. Every time you see an ayah, think that it's addressing you. It's Allah is talking to you now. This is not just the sahaba. It's not just Allah is talking. Allah needs me as Allah is just talking to me and my wife and my kids right now in this Quran. This way you will have uh, reviving the Quran and understanding the Quran Better understanding of the Quran. Can we have it one more?